Hi, my name is Champion, and I'm going to show you how to use pivot tables in Google Sheets. So before we begin, why do we use pivot tables in the first place? Well, number one, it helps to summarize big data fast. It helps to spot patterns instantly. And lastly, it helps you to save time. So if we look over here, we can use pivot tables to go from this big table of messy data without any insights. And we can turn it into these tables with real business insights. So as you can see here, we can get the sum of revenue for each product as you can see. And over down here, we can get the sum of revenue for each product by region. So we have all the products and then you can see the breakdown by the region, east, north, south, west, and of course the grand totals. So I know pivot tables might seem a little bit confusing, but I'm going to break it down really easily with my cap system. So it's just a three-step system. The first step is to clean your table. So if I just go back to my table over here, as you can see here, I have all these headers and the first thing you need to do is clean your table. So you need to make sure that there are no empty cells. And if it's a date column, make sure that only dates are there. And likewise for if it's numbers, currency, or a salesperson, make sure that all your cells are filled up with the correct data. Once that's done, we can move on to A, which is add a pivot table. And we can select anywhere in the table. And then what you want to do is go up to the menu bar over here and click on insert and then go ahead and scroll down till you find pivot table. Now, once you create a pivot, it's gonna come up with this little pop-up over here, and it's basically asking where do you want to put the pivot table? So we can put it on a new sheet, or we can put it on an existing sheet. We also have the data range. So right now it's selecting the entire table from A1 all the way to G101. However, usually when you're working with pivot tables, you want it to update automatically whenever you insert new data. So what you're going to do is simply come over to the data range and get rid of the last number, which is 101. And what that will do is when you press create, it'll then open a new sheet. And as you can see, the data range will just go to the very end of that previous sheet. So now that we've cleaned our table and added a pivot table, the last thing we need to do is pick your fields. So what do I mean by this? So when you're greeted by this pivot table page, you will see that you have this pivot table editor which will pop up on the right hand side of your screen. So what I recommend doing right off the bat is just taking a look at the suggested pivot tables that Google Sheets gives you. So as you can see here, we have the sum of revenue for each product. So we can go ahead and click on that and it'll automatically give you the sum of revenue for each product. If we click on the next one, now we can see the breakdown by the region. We can also look at this one. It gets the sum of units sold for each product by region. So if you ever don't know where to start, this is a very good place to start with. And you can also press this little magnifying glass and it'll have a little pop-up table like this, which is just an image instead of it actually being on the cells. So I'm just going to hop back over to the sum of revenue for each product. And just so I mentioned, you need to pick your fields. So what these suggestions do is that it automatically picks fields for you. So what's a field? A field is one of the table headers. So we have date, product, region, salesperson, unit sold, unit price and revenue. And if we go back to our previous sheet down here, we can see that all the fields are actually just the header names of this table. So as you can see here, the fields that we've used are product and revenue. And as you can see here, we have the product in our rows. So this is our rows and we have all the products here. And then for the revenue, we have it in our values. So the values will be in the middle of the table. Now let's say if we wanted to divide it by region earlier on and we wanted to do it ourselves, we want to put the region in the columns. So this is a column up here. So what we need to do is we need to look for a region and we can simply drag and drop it into our columns. And now we can see the total breakdown of the different regions. Now I'm just going to remove that by pressing the X over here. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the revenue to the values again. And instead of getting the number like we do over here, we can simply come over to show as, click on the drop down and click on percentage of column. So once we do that, we can easily see the breakdown of the percentage of the sales for each different product. So we can see that phone took up 25% of the total revenue. Now I'm going to remove all the fields and now I'm gonna start one from scratch. So another way to add fields to these rows, columns, values, filters, we can simply click on add here. And let's say if I wanted to add the salesperson. Now I got my salespeople over here and I wanna see how much money they each brought in. So I'm going to add the revenue 
to the values. And we can also make this cell bigger so we can see the entire header is now I want to drag the product to the rows. We have two layers of rows. We have the salesperson and we have the product. So as we can see here, now we can see each breakdown by each salesperson. So this can be very useful if you need to see the breakdown for each salesperson. So we can see Alice sold $12,000 worth of phones, Bob sold 23,000 worth of tablets, and so on and so forth. We also have the option to minimize each salesperson. If you don't wanna see the entire breakdown, you can just simply minimize it, or you could expand it however you like. Now there's two more ways you can use pivot tables which are extremely useful that not a lot of people talk about. So I'm going to remove all the fields again. And this time I want to see the revenue by the date. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the date to the rows. And then the next thing I want to do is get the revenue and add that to the values. So as you can see here, we're getting the revenue from each day. However, I want it by each month. So what you're going to do is come over to the date column and you're gonna right click and look for create pivot date group. You're gonna click on that and then now you can select how you want to group the dates. So I want it by year month. So go ahead and click on year month. So now I can easily see the revenue for each month. So January was 203,000, March was 118,000. And let's say if I want it by a different pivot date group, we can select day of week instead. And now we can see if we analyze this table that Tuesdays give us our highest revenue. So maybe there's something happening special on Tuesday that the business should take note of. So using pivot date groups are extremely, extremely useful. Now the last thing I wanna show you is how to use filters. So let's say if I add salesperson to the rows, now I can see the breakdown of each month and of each salesperson during each month. Now what we can do is we can go to filters down here and I can click add. And then now what I'm going to do is add salesperson to the filter. So let's say if I click on the filter and I only select Alice, if I press okay, now my table will only show Alice. Let's say if I wanted to see the difference between Bob and Charlie, I can just select Bob and Charlie, press okay. And then now I can clearly see Charlie made more than Bob in January as well as February. However, Bob made more than Charlie in March. Now, maybe I didn't want to see the revenue. Maybe I wanted to get rid of the revenue. And instead, I wanted to see the units sold. I could choose that as well. And the filter would still apply. And to go even further, let's say I wanted to add product to the columns. So now I can easily see a filtered view of how many units Bob sold for headphones, for monitors. Charlie sold 13 laptops in January. Let's say if I wanted to get rid of the filter and bring everyone back, I can go and click and click select all four, press OK, and now I can see the total breakdown for each salesperson. So if your boss ever comes to you, for example, asking who made the most sales for headphones in March, we can easily see that if we go to March, we go to headphones and we see that out of the four salespeople, only three made sales of headphones and Alice sold a whopping 10 units. So I hope by now you're starting to imagine the power of pivot tables and what you can do with it. And honestly, one of the best ways to actually learn how to use pivot tables is to actually just play around with it, add pivot tables to your own sheet and see how you can add different fields to rows, columns, values, and using filters as well. That's all I have for pivot tables today. If you'd like to work with me, check the first link in the description. And if not, go ahead and check out this video if you'd like to see how to make a dashboard.